Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Expertly Dyed Art by Science, and this is Fiber Talk episode number three. And today's topic is going to be merino wool. Now, I really like using merino, and it's very easy to get your hands on it because approximately 50% of all the wool produced for commercial applications is from merino wool, or sorry, from merino sheep. So um, it's it's a really great fiber for most next to skin items, uh, but it isn't the most durable. Um, but the accessibility, the softness, it makes it a very um, easy fiber to get your hands on to use. And a lot of people that you may encounter out in the spinning world have probably some experience using merino wool. So um, I have talked about Ori, the magnificent merino fleece. Um, he's actually also a sheep <laughs> and a male, <laughs> but he produces some of the best fiber. It's so soft, and um, I think the lady I get it from, she always shears his his fleece late in the year so that there's an extra half inch to an inch growth um, on his fleece. So. Most of the time when you get merino in combed top form, it will be an approximation uh, like around three inches in length. Um, but when I get it from her, it's roughly four inches. Sometimes it's a little bit less, sometimes it's a little bit more, but the average length is uh, about four inches. So that's actually an incredible length because it makes it a lot more versatile than just the three inch length. So. Um, when I bought from her this last time, I didn't have it washed because I knew that I was going to be coming home for the holidays. So I was just going to say, you know, I'll wash it and do a video about it. <laughs> so here we are. I'm talking about uh, merino wool, and I'm very thankful that I decided to uh, do it this way so that you guys can actually see what it looks like. Now, I think if memory serves, maybe she put it on the box. She's, she's very organized. Ah, she did. So she had this um, reserved for me. I don't know if you can really see that label too clearly. Yes. But um, it's 7 pounds, 4 ounces. And this is a prime fleece. She she coated the fleece because she takes her animals and does um, like a fleece show where they they trot the animal out with the fleece still on the, the animal. And uh, the judges come out and they look at the... The fleece and they grate it and then they shear it and then people buy it so like me <laughs> so um, you can't really get merino much better than this I don't know if she actually sends off her merino for um, micron counts she might but uh, based on the feel of the yarns that I've made from it I could say it's it's probably close to the super fine range maybe 19 to 20 microns so um, merino usually ranges between 18 and about 23 microns, where 23 is sort of like the cheaper merino, but it's still really soft. And because it's cheap and soft, you kind of get like a nice built-in discount. Um, but on the 18 micron side, it's considered super fine, which means it's sort of on par with um, yak down, uh, sometimes cashmere is um, at most like 18 microns. So it's very, it's like right around that that mark. And I've also seen, there's a lady who sells this actually on Etsy and it's 13 micron merino wool. And that is putting it nearly on par with silk. So it's extremely soft. <laughs> now, um, because it's one of those fine breeds, there's gonna be a lot of lanolin. But like I said, because the the, the fleece that I have is coated. There's like a little jacket thing that the sheep wears um, when it's out in the field so that dirt and dust and little pieces of vegetable matter don't get stuck in the fleece. I actually get more yield out of my fleeces than if I were to buy a fleece from someone who hasn't gone through the extra effort to coat their sheep um, because probably 10%, well, depending, <laughs> maybe 5 to 10% of that lost weight is actually little pieces of vegetable matter, which are a pain to get out of really fine fleeces. So, here we go. 
and it's a very, very white fleece. Now this is the shorn end pointing up. So when you, um, I think I talked about this in another video. So when you shear it off the animal, it goes to a skirting table, which is basically a table that has a screen on it and it's uh, shorn side up with the tips facing down. And what people will do is they'll pick off all of those teeny short little cuts called seconds and they, they dispose of that and then they flip it over, kind of give it a little shake and then they wrap it so that the shorn end is on the outside and the tips of the locks are facing the inside. So it keeps all the dirt together. Something that it tells um, people like me is when I look at the ends, what I'm looking for is the health of the animal. So if there's a lot of flaky bits or there's like actually, <laughs> it's really disgusting, if there's actually little pieces of skin, then you know that this animal actually suffered from a skin condition, probably either through diet or some kind of pathogen. Um, and maybe the fleece isn't a high quality one, so if they're charging a lot for it, I would walk away because that's not a good sign. But this, it's absolutely beautiful. The, the ends, very clean. I actually cannot see any second cuts at all in this top layer. So what I did when I first got this, I had my mother-in-law, she opened up the box. because they, they always put them in these bags for our transport. Um, but I wanted to let it breathe a little bit before I got a chance to work with it. And she just shoved... Um, this is a dryer sheet. She just shoved one in here. Uh, she didn't have what I usually have around, which is um, lavender. So we've been doing a lot of talking about this fleece. But let me actually pick out a lock for you to see. And it's so gosh dang white. There we go. So you can actually see the crimp definition. It's kind of wanting to curl a little bit, but you can see there those locks kind of sticking to each other like that. So when the, when the lock grows, all of the neighboring fibers kind of follow the same lock structure the whole way up. Okay. And I will take photos of this and put it on this blog because it's an amazing, amazing fleece. <laughs> it's very soft. It's very, very white. Um, the lanolin... I mean, I can feel it when I touch the lock. I can feel it between my fingers. It's not a whole lot, and it's, it's definitely enough for the fiber. And then you can see here this teeny little bit about of dirt at the, the ends. That's about it when it comes to the dirt for this fleece. This is why this is called a prime fleece, because... The fiber is so incredibly clean to begin with. Now most of this dirt is going to wash out um, and what isn't going to wash out it will stay relatively in this uh, lock formation during the washing process because I'm going to wash it in one of those mesh bags. So when I'm going through the opening stage uh, like I did for the Paul Wars, I'm going to do the exact same thing for this. I'll actually probably either brush this out with a, um, like a fine tooth comb or I might, there may not be a whole lot, so maybe I'll just open up the locks this way so that, um, you know, the fiber stays relatively in this form, just nice and open so I can put it through the drum carter. And of course, you know, this place is going to have some dirtier pieces, but Overall, this is a seven pound fleece from a top quality animal and all of the really nasty bits have already been removed so I didn't have to pay for it, which is really nice. <laughs> Don't have to process it either. <laughs> and then I have here, this is his uh, fleece from last year. 
and I have it in a giant sweater mesh bag. And what I use to sort of diminish the smell, because it smells wooly, and it's not really a bad smell, but if you have a small apartment and um, you have a lot of wool, like, like I do in Korea, I still have a lot of wool in Korea, even though I've pretty much moved everything uh, back to the States, um, there will still be that smell of sheep. So in here, a lot of the bag was a little bit too open, so <laughs> it spilled out onto the fleece. But this is actually just lavender that I grew in my garden in Korea. Lavender grows really well. It's very easy to take care of. It's extremely hardy, and even people who have those black thumbs can grow lavender really, really well. So what I did is I gathered the bunches after harvesting and I tied them together at the end and I hung them upside down to finish drying. My apartment smelled really great, it smelled like lavender for a few days. And then I just put it in here and the goal is to actually divide this up to make those little sachets so I can put it in all my fleeces um, because eventually I'm going to separate this. And it all should have a little bit of the lavender. Or if you don't have fresh lavender, you can use a dryer sheet. So, here we go. This is the merino after it's been washed. You notice it doesn't have that super distinct uh, lock structure like the other one that I showed you did. Sorry, I'm still working out um, solutions for the, the videos. So you'll just have to bear with me a little bit longer <laughs> while I figure this all out. Um, part of the basement is under construction at the moment, uh, which is where I am now. So there's some places I can't go yet. <laughs> and you can see both ends of the lock are actually completely clean. And the whole fleece is like this. If I were to just go in and grab this random bit and show you, it's all super duper clean. There's almost nothing in this fleece at all. This is why I am willing to spend a little bit more money for a prime fleece uh, that has been um, coated the whole year. <laughs> as soon as he gets sheared, he gets a new coat. Come on. Oh, maybe if I do that. There we go. You can see a little bit better. And some of these locks will showcase the lock structure a little bit more. Let me do a side-by-side -side comparison with this one. You can see just sort of how different they look. So the one on the bottom is the unwashed version, and the one on the top is the washed. So you will lose a little bit of this incredible crimped lock structure where all the fibers are in alignment. You'll lose you'll lose some of that when you wash the fleece, but you know it's to be expected. But in general, if you do um, the washing process that I mentioned in an earlier video, how to wash a fleece, you'll get locks which still maintain their form like this. Now, I didn't wash this fleece. This one I bought and had washed professionally because in Korea, this would have taken me an eternity to wash. Because <laughs> I could only do, um, at the time when I bought this, I could only wash at most four ounces at a time. And I had to boil the water because our water didn't actually get hot enough <laughs> to, to scour the fleece. So 
but it's still roughly parallel. So when it comes to actually processing these locks, it's going to be very painless. So I'm really looking forward to um, playing with this fleece. And I, I've, I have actually three of these fleeces now. I have the one um, that I processed from his 2012 fleece. Yes, his 2012 fleece. And I've used about two-thirds of that. And then I have um, his 2013 fleece, which is one of one of this size times two. <laughs> so I have two. Imagine I'm holding another one. I have two this size. And this was his 2013 fleece. And actually, it was six pound nine ounces three and a half inch staple for this fleece and his most recent fleece this one from 2014 is what I say seven and a half pounds seven pounds four ounces uh, for his most recent fleece which has a four inch staple so I have probably about 10 pounds 12 pounds total of eventually it will be washed but it will probably be about 12 pounds or so of merino wool <laughs> from one sheep. <laughs> I should probably make more projects with it. So um, if you're following along with the Unishrug, this is actually the fleece that I'm using for that project. So, and if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch those videos. Anyway, so sorry this video was a little bit longer, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, the fleeces themselves. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about what to do with merino. So merino is a really great fiber for next to skin items. Things like mittens and hats and um, scarves, cowls, shawls, anything that you're going to put around your neck, anything you're going to put over your ears, anything you're going to put on your hands, um, cuffs, you know, fingerless mitts, those, those types of items are going to be really great with merino. Anything made for babies, if you're going to do baby blankets, if you're going to do like those wool washer things where um, they're like felted baby diapers that if the baby goes to the bathroom, um, they just take the diaper off and wash it. Um, it's very absorbent. I think it holds up to 30% of its weight in moisture without feeling wet. So if a baby goes to the bathroom, um, then it will be absorbed and wicked away from the baby's bottom so that you don't have that sitting up against the skin for very long. And they're very easy to wash because they're already felted. So you just put in a whole bunch of hot, hot water, <laughs> wash them, dry them, and they're ready to go for the next couple of days, I guess. I know a lot of women who um, have sort of adopted this idea, and they say it works really well, and it cuts down significantly on diapers because they're really easy to make. You just get the merino wool, felt it, and you can make a whole, whole bunch of diapers very quickly. So, and you know, it's, it's really great for the environment as well. So, um, baby items, blankets, if you're going to make like little baby sweaters, anything like real cutesy like that, maybe little baby socks, uh, merino wool will be really great for that. If you know people who have sensitive skin, um, not allergic to lanolin, and not um, so sensitive that any kind of scratchy fiber, sometimes merino is considered a scratchy fiber. Um, even with people who have sort of more sensitive skin, then um, merino wool is a really great wool to use for that. And keep in mind that when you spin the wool fibers for merino, they poof up a lot. Not as much as Paul wars. We already had that discussion, but it definitely will puff up more. Um, where is that lock I was using? Uh, let's grab another one here. <laughs> so if you were to compress this, let's pretend like this is a really big piece of yarn. It's just, you know, two locks, right? If I release the tension, it puffs up a lot like that. There we go. <laughs> Still getting used to the lighting. So it'll, it'll puff up a lot. So if you try to compress it 
when you're spinning and ply it, it's going to puff up a lot when it's when you're spinning with it, but it's very predictable. So whenever I spin and ply merino wool, I will spin to half of the a little bit less than a little bit more than half of the total wraps per inch I want. So for example, if I want a finished yarn that is 10 wraps per inch, which is um, kind of like a worsted weight yarn to ply, then I will spin the singles at 22 wraps per inch. So if I was spinning, say, a different type of finer wool, like maybe if it was Blue Face Luster or Falkland, I would spin that for the singles at 20 wraps per inch. And when I applied it, it would be a very nice 10 wraps per inch yarn. But because Merino is a little bit poofier, um, I tried to go a little bit more than that, so I would spin the singles at 22 wraps per inch, and once I applied it and set the yarn, it would be a very nice 20, or 10 wraps per inch <laughs> in the end. So um, just be aware that merino will poof up a little bit more than you expect, so definitely experiment with it if you're going to use it for a project and make note of it. Uh, so that when you have to make more in the future, or if you have to make more in the future, you already know how much um, to spin it to, so you don't have to experiment again. <laughs> experiment once, and then that's it, right? <laughs> Keep track. <laughs> anyway, so we talked about the fleece, we talked about um, the different applications, but um, some things that I would sort of stay away from when using merino wool for things is socks. It seems like a really good idea to use merino for socks because you like soft things on your feet too. Who doesn't? But it's not an extremely durable yarn. However, if you spin it with um, a higher wraps per inch, sorry, twists per inch, um, so you could characterize it as a high twist or a medium high twist two ply or three ply yarn, then you'll have better luck using it as a sock yarn, but if you but if you want to use a single um, or if you want to use sort of like a lighter twist yarn, plied yarn, then you shouldn't use it for socks because they're just going to fall apart. <laughs> I haven't had the experience of my merino socks falling apart, but I know others have and I've read stories about it, so I just want to caution you, if you want to use merino wool for socks, either don't or you could use um, a higher twist to sort of make sure that it doesn't get abraded too quickly. But um, they're, they make really nice luxury socks. I made a pair of the, it was the unofficial Harry Potter, Harry Potter Knits magazine had a dragon egg sock. And I used 100% merino wool. I made a very high twist to ply, um, I think it was a fingering weight yarn. And um, I've worn the sock several times now, and there's only a little bit of a braiding at the heel, which is to be expected. And outside of the initial amount of abrasion, where the, the friction of the heel and the shoe um, sort of like causes the merino to like felt a little bit, and a, a very teeny amount of pilling happens there. Outside of the initial wear, um, I haven't had any issues with it continuing further, so I'm fairly confident that um, it'll be just fine. But I also don't wear them for, you know, around the house. I have different socks that I use for that. So, um, but if you want to make some really nice luxury socks, definitely use Merino. But if you're going to make, like, everyday around the house type socks, maybe um, either make a high twist Merino yarn or combine it with something more strong or uh, skip it and uh, use Blue Face Luster because it's actually a really nice, soft, shiny fiber that actually holds up better as a sock yarn than just plain merino. So, but I'll talk about that in the future. Anyway, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, post below, like this video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And if there's anything that I missed or any anything else you want to add, you know, let me know. You can find me over on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, and I post things on Instagram and my blog. I post a lot of things to my blog. I'm going to be doing it more regularly now that I'm 
stable again and the holidays are kind of over for now. Um, so yeah, anyway, so thanks for watching. Bye.